Today's inflatable watercraft range from rafts and dinghies to canoes and kayaks. They're less expensive than conventional boats and easier to store and transport. You don't need a trailer, just throw your boat in the trunk. Then unfold and inflate it when you get to your aquatic destination. Whether it's a raft shooting the rapids or a motorized boat gliding across a calm lake, an inflatable watercraft begins with sturdy, waterproof material. This company uses a millimeter thick PVC fabric that has a nylon or polyester fiber core. After workers trace and cut out the pieces that will form the boat, they connect them with a strip of the same material, fusing them together using a machine with a propane flame. The intense heat melts the surface of the PVC until the pieces bond. Here's that bonding action in slow motion. Next, they fuse a strip of pure PVC to the underside of the joint. This ensures that air won't leak out of the boat where the pieces connect. Inflating the boat will pull on the material surrounding the air valve. So they reinforce that area with a round piece of PVC called a doubler. This high-frequency welding machine applies 127 kilograms of pressure and heat-generating FM waves to fuse the doubler in place. Then they cut a hole in the middle of the doubler for the air valve. Next come the cones. Cones support the weight of the motor and enable the boat to plane to rise above the water when traveling at high speed. Using the propane flame machine, workers seal together the ends of the boat, then insert the inside cone piece just before they close her up completely. They finish off the seal using the high-frequency welding machine then pull the cone piece through. They inflate the boat until the pressure forces the cone piece into place. They seal all around it with heavy-duty caulking. Stick on the outside cone piece, then screw it securely in place. They inflate the boat fully now to perfect the seal and to expel the excess caulking. Now they install what's called the transom, a plank of wood that supports the motor at the rear of the boat. They cover it in boat fabric using a plastic resin-based glue that's resistant to the fiery heat of the sun. They apply the same glue to the piece of material that will become the underside of the boat then position it in place. After gluing on a bumper made of hard PVC, they coat the boat's underside in a liquid plastic resin. This protects the bottom when the boat runs aground over rocks and sand. They test inflate the keel, a stabilizer that runs the length of the boat. Then they deflate it and begin installing the floor. The floor is made up of five connected pieces, three made of aluminum and two made of fiberglass, plastic or wood. The hole in the floor is for the keel's air valve. After inflating the boat, they inflate the keel. Now they can take measurements to determine where to position the oars. First, they glue on the oar locks, the pieces that hold the oars in place. The oars are made of aluminum, so they're lightweight and they won't rust. The motor is 6 horsepower to 50 horsepower, depending on the size of the boat.